Hey everybody, thanks for coming to hang out again. Uh, this video is not super long, uh, but you will want to watch towards the end. I know that sounds like a YouTube monetization thing, but really it's just because the cool part is at the end. Uh, but what we're working on here is I decided, uh, you know, there's always some cool factor stuff you want. So originally these doors, you're looking at the front door. So this is actually called door number six. For those of you that have watched the channel, this is the door that we popped open and all the water came, came out and I screamed like a small child. If you haven't seen that video, link in the description. Uh, but this is the video, this is the, sorry, this is the door that we opened uh, to do that. So what we're doing here is, you know, really it's just cool factor. We're going to make it where this door will open at the flip of a switch. Originally, uh, you know, these doors being 6,000 pounds, you would think, okay, this originally would open and close um, by a switch or something like that. And actually, that's not the case. The door locks would open and close hydraulically, uh, but the actual door was just hand operated. In fact, these doors, uh, for those of you that come visit, you're welcome to come by, just uh, reach out first is a good idea. Uh, you'll see that you can open and close these by hand. In fact, we've had pe probably people as uh, young as seven, eight years old uh, that can get these things open and closed. So what I'm doing here is working on some brackets. I'm using the plasma cutter. Uh, plasma cutters are super awesome. A little bit spendy. I bought this one a number of years ago when we were working on the scrapping and uh, they're not great for scrapping. Um, unless it's cleaner metal and it's flatter metal. Um, so torches and, and other tools are great for scrapping otherwise. Uh, but, but as far as fabrication goes, it's really hard to beat a plasma. Uh, the way plasmas work, I'll just kind of, you know, chat about that a second. Plasmas actually superheat the metal with electricity, a lot like welding does, except it also blows air out. So when you use a, a plasma cutter, you actually have a compressed air hook to it as well, like an air compressor. Um, is, is typically what you use. But the plasma cutters themselves, you can just carry around. They're actually quite small, um, kind of handheld, not handheld, but you know, 20, 30 pound things that you can just uh, walk around with. So we're drilling out that, um, this is for the mount. So what that drill bit is, is that mount is for the um, actuator. So the actuators we're gonna use is from a company called Progressive Automations, progressiveautomations.com. They are not sponsoring this video. Uh, but I am giving them a shout out because they've been really good to me. There's other projects in the silo I've used actuators with. I will uh, let you see those later. Um, but I had uh, an actuator fail. Uh, we were pretty sure it was my fault due to overload, but they um, were really good to me and treated me great. So um, I've always had great service from them. And plus, moving anything by a switch, I think is just super cool. Uh, you know, flip a switch, something open, secret compartments, doors. Um, I just, I'm, I am a, a child when it comes to that. I think it's just super awesome. So that's what we're doing this. I'm just grinding this down, making it kind of nice. Uh, and these are two brackets that you're seeing here. So they're kind of side by side. I'm just uh, making sure they're uh, the same all the way around. So this is the inside view. We're in the first room. This is the first room you walk into in the missile silo. Um, and what we're doing is I'm welding these uh, brackets on here. Uh, so there's going to be two brackets that go onto um, the blast door. Now, this is pretty tricky how to do this. In fact, I don't have it in the whole video, but I had to do, you know, kind of do this over and over again to get the angles correct. The hinge of the door is not, you know, like a door for your house where the hinge is, you know, right along the edge of the door. The hinge is about 18 inches outside of that. So it, it, the way it opens is kind of interesting. Um, so I kind of had to mess with those angles quite a bit, um, hooking up the actuator and then getting it, uh, get it adjusted uh, where, it would, uh, where it would work well. Uh, so what we're uh, doing here is this is the first time we're putting the actuator together. Um, so this actuator, this is the back end mount. I'm only doing one mount back here for now, just for testing purposes. So you'll see that the pin is kind of holding it, but in a permanent installation, there would be two, you know, the, the actuator would go between two brackets, but this is plenty strong to do that. All right, testing it for the first time. Let's see uh, how it opens and closes. Um, again, progressiveautomations.com uh, if you want to go uh, check them out. You can do anything from small little projects with Arduino and 
you know, even if you want to make like a drawer move open or close, or this one, this actuator you're seeing here, will move 2,000 pounds. The downside of something like that is it doesn't move it super fast. You'll see this door is not opening as fast as I would like. Um, so I may do something different in the future, uh, but it's still pretty cool to have a door that opens and closes uh, without, uh, you know, just by pushing of a button. Or if I decide to go the Arduino route and put a Wi-Fi chip in it, then you could actually open and close this with an app. But uh, yeah, here's the here's the awesome payoff. Um, here's it opening and closing from uh, the inside. Switch on the inside and the outside. Uh, anyway, just a, a little short video to show you some of the cool stuff we're doing. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video.